Happy Saturday, everybody. Guys, it's July 1st, which means I have preliminary data for you for Nashville's housing market so you can see exactly what's happening and where we're going. But first, we have to talk about Airbnb. What in the world? Guys, take a look at this tweet. And I know you've probably seen it because everybody's seen it, but it says the Airbnb collapse is real. Watch out for the wave of forced selling, blah, blah, blah. Here's the thing. Here's the question that I think everybody first asked, which is, are revenues down 47.6%? And I got to tell you, I talked to several people who own Airbnbs here. And by and large, I only had one that said yes, and everybody else said no. So I think by and large, the answer is no. But I don't think that's what made this tweet go viral. Obviously, this looks sensational. But it's behind, it's what's behind this. Is there going to be forced selling in Airbnb if Airbnb truly collapses, if revenues truly collapse? Now, I don't think they collapsed, right? I, I, I don't think they collapsed. I talked to several of my friends and they indicated that they weren't super profitable. One said that they were profitable. The other said not really making any money, but it's not really a collapse either, but it's, it's probably not worth it. So it's been a tougher, it's much tougher environment right now, but, it, but but the uh, chief economist for AirDNA came out and showed this chart. Now, this chart's really interesting to me for a couple of reasons. One is it's still showing a massive drop in revenue for Sevierville. And so minus 10% or 9.4% might as well be 10%. That's that's a lot. But what but what you need to realize if, if you are just beginning to, to be an investor or if you're dabbling in investment or you're thinking about it or you're new to the idea of investment and how this could maybe create supply in single family, a, a revenue drop of 10% year over year is massive, okay? It might as well be 48% because 10% drop in revenue growth, if you had a 10% drop in revenue, you probably had a 30 to 50% drop in profitability. And here's why that's the case. If I have fixed cost, my property tax is fixed, insurance is fixed, um, essentially my mortgage payment, which covers all of that, is fixed, right? Regardless of whether I get revenue, I still have to pay those payments. Utilities may be a little bit variable, but, but in general, you're going to have a utility bill regardless of whether people are using it. So if my revenue drops 10%, I'm still making the same payments minus my management fee. I've got a lot of payments that I've got to make, which means my profit is shrinking way more than 10%. And that's the thing that people need to realize. A 10% drop is massive. Now look over here at Nashville. Nashville's 3% drop. I'll tell you, if you're running this like a business, a 3% drop is painful. It could be a 15% drop in profitability. It, 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 it's not a 3% drop is not nothing, okay? Uh, it's definitely something to keep an eye on, but it's also not a 48% or 25% drop. Now, uh, does that mean that there are Airbnbs here that have that kind of drop? Maybe, I don't know. But here's your takeaway. Your takeaway is this. Revenue is dropping regardless of whether it's 10%, 50%, or 3%. Nobody's really modeling a drop in revenue. And when we look at supply, Okay, when we look at Airbnbs that are for rent right now, just in Davidson County, which is the core of Nashville, we get 7,900 entire homes, according to AirDNA. Okay, now to put this in perspective, Davidson County, along with the surrounding other eight counties, our entire inventory is about 7,500 for condo, condominiums and single family homes. Okay, it's about 7,500. So if we have 7,900 Airbnbs just in Davidson County and they start getting squeezed, you don't need all 7,900 to move the needle on inventory here in Nashville. If you got 10 to 20% of those start liquidating or saying, we're going to sell because we're not making it work. Now I'll tell you, these 7,900, they're, they're a mix of businesses. They're just people that are putting their house on Airbnb to help cover their mortgage a little bit. But the bottom line is you just don't need all of them. 10 to 20% would massively increase our inventory. It'd increase our inventory by like 30%, okay? And we're just talking Davidson County. So keep in mind that Airbnbs that get into a situation where they do get forced into selling, especially if it's off season, could create a lot of downward price pressure. And so we could see this trickle into the single family market in a significant way because there is a significant amount of Airbnbs in Middle Tennessee. So it's something to keep an eye on. But right now, there's nothing to me that shows um, 
I've seen some investment disasters here in Na- Nashville. I've seen some, and I there's one that I'm just like, man, that's so bad. But I'm not seeing it yet in Airbnbs. Now, if you are, post a comment. Tell me what you're seeing. I would love to know. I'm not seeing it yet. Um, let's take a look at rents, though. When we look at CoStar data, rents are down year over year 1.2%. Our vacancy rate is 10.8%, guys. Our deliveries are 12,000, and our absorption is 5,000. Let me translate that for you. We are building well over two times what we are absorbing, okay? So we are only absorbing half of the units that are getting built as they're being delivered, okay? This accumulation of empty residences will continue to put downward pressure, especially in the core, urban core of Nashville, all right? Now, single-family homes, there are pockets that are really bad. There are pockets that are okay. But in general, rents are not going up anymore. They're going down. Okay, so let's take a look They've got a nice daily chart of this, and I'm going to show you because it's really good data. And it's the daily asking rent per square foot. And you can see it's dropping now. We're starting to see it drop. We're going to the second half of the year seasonally. This is the time of the year where it drops. And because there's so much more supply, it would make a whole lot of sense that our lows would be lower than they were last year. So last year we started at this time. We started seeing rents drop. And you can see they dropped pretty significantly. And then it kind of trickled back up in the first half of the year. Now we're starting to see a drop again. Apartment list is saying Nashville's down 3% year over year. And this kind of jives with the CoStar data. And I, in general, think we're flat to down, depending on where you are. I don't think that things are going up rapidly. Now, if, you, if you're seeing rents go up in your area rapidly, leave a comment. I would love to explore that. But that's not what I'm seeing in general. Rents are flat or they're uh, uh, leasing up at a lower price point. So tell me what you guys are seeing. Tell me what you guys are seeing. I would love to know. Now, again, how does this connect to single families in Nashville? And the answer is, is that rent price pressure puts pressure on investors buying a home. Investors will buy a house if the rents make sense. And what we're seeing right now is that they're not penciling out. They don't make sense. Build to rent doesn't make sense. Buying to rent doesn't make a lot of sense in most cases. We're not seeing that. However, what's really interesting is I had a conversation yesterday where someone said, build or rent's not making sense, but building to sell is making sense. And you know what? I think they're right because I was down in Franklin. I was at a water's edge and there was a, an entire block of houses being built and they could not be building them faster. I mean, they were every single house had somebody in it working on it, building it, roofing it, um, sheathing it. I mean, it didn't matter. It, it was all happening at the same time on every single house. It was amazing to see, but it's because, uh, even though rents don't make sense to where prices are, there are people that want to buy them. And I believe this is a migration story. I've said this before and I'll say it again. There are 10 million people in LA County, 10 million people. There are 7 million people in the entire state of Tennessee. It does not take a lot of California migration to move the needle here in Nashville. So I think they're holding up the prices and how long that will happen, I don't know. I mean, there's there's like 40 million people in California. They could like continue to move and it would hold up the prices forever here because people here can't afford the houses. People here can't afford the houses. But I guess if you're coming from California, it, it, it is a lot cheaper. I've talked to a lot of California people. It's a lot cheaper here. It feels like a steal. It's so great for them. And I'm happy for them, genuinely. But it is tough for people here buying houses. Okay, last thing I want to show you real quick. Prices. The middle, uh, the median sales price for June is $475. That's with 2,600 closings. We're probably going to be just over 27. So I think $2,750. You got about 100 left before we see the for the final final for $475. Okay, that is 1% down from last month at 480. So we were at 480 last month, we're at 475. It could bob back up. But the fact is, as I told you that I thought prices had peaked and I think they are peaking. However, when we look at under contract, we are still seeing under contract list 484, under contract showing 508. That does tell me that eh, we may get a little bit higher price in July. Um, here list was 482 and we're seeing 474 as the close price. Here it's 484. You know, maybe maybe it bobs back up to 480. Maybe it maybe it goes into the 480s. I don't know. But let's say it goes up to 485. Maybe it peaks in July this year. Nonetheless, we're seeing more and more inventory come online every single week. Now, it drops at the end of the month. So let's look at this 5572. You see it dropped. If we look at the last end of month, it was 5200. So we increased 
probably 8% if I had to just math it in my head. We increased active listings increased by about 8% for all of Middle Tennessee in the month of June. And we're still seeing momentum of active listings increase. So inventory is increasing. It's increasing in all price bands. And we are seeing prices hold. But if inventory is increasing and it's increasing in all price bands, it's hard for me to imagine that prices don't soften up, especially after we get through July and into August, where we get into the fall, people aren't trying to buy for a school zone. So keep in mind, I think prices will continue to soften as we go into the back half of the year. And because we're gonna potentially have a record inventory this year, we could see, you know, even further price declines. Now we'll see. I, I don't know if we'll get record inventory because it's not growing as fast as it did last year. Obviously, if we hit a recession and these Airbnbs start flooding the market or something, some dynamic comes on like that, I think a recession completely changes the narrative. I think if unemployment does increase, that completely changes the narrative. We are seeing prices drop for June, but we can expect prices to kind of go back up in July, hit that 480, maybe 485. So we could see we could see prices end up peaking in July, even as inventory is increasing. So that'll be an interesting dynamic to see play out. We'll see if that happens. I don't know if it'll happen, but on the back half of this year, inventory is increasing. We should see prices soften up. So. Keep an eye on that. And if you do have any questions, my name's Ethan Flynn. I am a CPA. I am a realtor. I uh, love investing and data in real estate. I'm trying to get better at all of them. And if you have any questions, I'd love to connect with you. I'll put in the description in the comments below. You can uh, see my contact information and we can connect. So with that, I hope you guys have a great weekend and I will talk to you next week.